What was the uh, timeline on that? Like when a trichome was formed, typically you're about going from clear to cloudy to amber. What's the general timeline for that transition? Well, it kind of depends on, I mean, it could take several weeks. Um, you know, the transition between, uh, particularly when you're going from like cloudy to amber, it's really the when the color starts to form inside of those trichome heads that there's an indication of some change in the chemistry. And sometimes what could be happening is the compounds that are inside of that trichome head could be um, starting to oxidize. And as they oxidize, the color will change a little bit. And a lot of growers will look at this as a sign of maturity, like the plant is ready to be harvested. Um, there are certainly cases where, like if you feed the correct things to your plants, if you have a dialed in fertilizer program, your plants will inherently be able to resist that oxidative stress. So they may develop those trichome heads more rapidly in the first, let's say, half of flowering. They're going to like develop them a lot faster and the flowers will grow out a lot more. But then when the trichome heads themselves are starting to, to become a little bit more cloudy and milky, they'll hang out in that transitionary space between being clear and being amber for a lot longer. So they'll resist the degradation associated with that, that ambering effect. You know, they'll go through the first half really rapidly, but then for the second half, it takes them forever, seemingly forever to finish up and to um, properly oxidize. So you see that color change happening. Um, a lot of what happens inside of the trichome heads as far as like the change of, you know, the constituents and what those molecules are inside of there, those are driven by non-enzymatic processes, meaning it's not something inside of the plant that's actually causing this discoloration. It's actually an environmental stressor. And I think it, it makes sense to pay attention to certain plants like hops, for example. It's a really good example of a plant with, um, it has bracts on the outside of the flowering cone, and then the lupulin glands actually face inward. There are other plants um, tomatoes may be a good one as well, where the trichomes actually pointed out, you know, if you look at the, the stalks and um, leaf surfaces of tomatoes, you'll see that those trichomes are actually exposed to the, to the surrounding environment. Um, and that's an important consideration too, because when you're just exposed to the out, outdoors with no protective sheath, like pop cones have that the bract itself is an actual physical sheath that protects it, you're more likely to get oxidative decomposition just because it's exposed to the air, you know? This clip is brought to you by Happy Hydro. For all your garden equipment needs, visit happyhydro.com, link is in the video description, and use the discount code MrGrowIt 